Sport has always been most effective, I would say, with uh, youth, um, bringing up confidence, self-confidence, uh, self-esteem. I was coaching hockey last year, and I've seen the young guys grow. I've had a good uh, mentor when I was growing up, and I would want to impart that on the youth I work with today. Showing them that sport, play, it's all a very important thing of life, and, and hopefully that to take that on with them through support their school careers and when they become parents themselves. This has been a long time coming. Uh, right to Play has been a long-standing partner of uh, MLSE and, and, of course, our charitable foundation. And through the MLSE Foundation, uh, we'll be investing a million dollars into Right to Play's Play program. And today is just a first of, of many initiatives that we'll be working on together. We're incredibly excited about this partnership with MLSE and uh, getting physically active, as we all know, is great for your mental health and uh, that's really just uh, the tool to get the kids involved and active and becoming uh, leaders and becoming uh, part of their communities. It's a dream, it really is. We looked at bringing possibility to every house in our community. And if I have a chance through a program like this to bring possibility to every one of those doors, I'll do that every day. We'll put the work in and what the dreamers dream, because that's what they should do. And why not do it here in a place of visions and dreams, right? We have the, we have the, we have the logo, we just need the mojo. We're on our way up to the Manitoulin Island region with 45 MLSE staff. Our sports clinicians are here on the bus. Our executive chefs from our restaurants will be doing nutrition uh, programming and performance-based food programming. Wendell Clark is coming up for Friday, our hockey programming day. Jamal McGlure, a Canadian basketball player, former Raptor on, on Saturday. And of course, Danny Kuvermans, who is an active TFC player, will be doing soccer programming on Sunday. So firstly, everybody knows Hockey for Development tomorrow. That's gonna take place in AOK. Also in Little Current. The kids, we're going to be teaching them a lot of sports specific skills, but also some life skills through leadership and team building games. It's really important to build that trust with the kids and the youth in the community. And once you do that, they really open up to you and you're going to hear some amazing things about what they're doing in their community, both in the Right to Play program and outside of the Right to Play program. Oh, you The most important people in our communities are the elders and the children. We have very, very large youth population. Uh, over 50% of the Aboriginal population is young people. So the need is an investment in young people and their leadership ability to be able to be our future leaders. Kids just sit here and they struggle a lot and they struggle in non-native schools, they struggle academically. Kids now have gone into a different era. They, they sit at home, they play Nintendo games, you don't see them out. We have lots of facilities. We built a rink, you've you got a ball field over there, and you see there's hardly any participants anymore. You see increase in diabetes in young kids, you see uh, obesity. The need is manifold uh, in many ways. It's just about believing in the people again and giving them the opportunity to grow and and harness their talent they have and giving them the responsibility to lead. You know, the, all this negativity around the community is just what we're trying to uh, create an alternative to that. But it has to happen from within. Community wellness is a big issue for our community and what we're looking for is affirmation along the way. We're not looking for anybody to rescue us and say, please save us and do the right thing for us. It's we have it within us, we have it within our spirit, we have it within our hearts, we have it within our minds, we have it within our physical being to make the proper choices. And this is what recreation is doing, this is what sport's doing. Within the communities, I think what Right to Play does so well is um, builds leaders for the next generation. And uh, they don't leave, 
There's people within the community that are continuously building the right to play mantra, which is to help one another and to really include everybody. And it's all about, it's really all about teamwork when it comes down to it. These are the things that I think right to play stands for, where we're getting more motivation and we're getting more people out, you know. And you can see it today by the children that are coming here is that they're excited to be here. And it's not all about competition, it's meeting your, your neighbours down the road and, and interacting with other First Nations around this area. Because that's been stagnant for some years now where they stay on the west end, we stay over here and the rest stay over there and nobody's mingling. We came in from Garden River, Ontario today, uh, which is about three, uh, three hours away. Uh, so the kids were on the bus at six this morning. Um, all very excited. I think the sport, it brings a group together. You're sitting in a dressing room, you're one group, you're against the other team, uh, learning to get along with teammates, learning to get along with your peers who are coaching you, and you're all striving for one goal. It's been great, positive energy all day, and uh, the kids are having a blast. Uh, the kids, uh, in our community, uh, like they say, idle hands, uh, you know, they tend to get in trouble, right? Um, you know, with this, uh, with this Right to Play program, it gives them a, a chance to, uh, you know, to get out and have some fun and, and, and be in a safe environment. You grew up in the house, wherever you lived, on a farm, our home in the winter was meeting all your buddies at the rink and playing on your hockey team. greatest thing about sports, they don't understand they're learning. And they're learning all these things where in school, we tell them they're learning. I just love seeing them uh, learn new skills. Uh, they're trying so hard and working so hard. And if we can impart some of our knowledge to these kids and to see the best in themselves. And I just love at the end of the day, seeing those big smiles and seeing how much fun they have just playing. Today's day two and it's really, really exciting because we have over a hundred kids came back. They loved yesterday, they came back, that's a really good sign. We're in a new community and so we have that whole opportunity for the kids to travel to each community, so that whole sense of, of interrelationship community building. Today uh, I saw a lot of participation and it's really great to see my reserve is here, my community is here and seeing them participate and having fun is, is a fulfillment for me. And I was telling the guys earlier um, that we don't see that, that commitment, that involvement, that participation, that motivation, we don't see that and today I did. It's going great so far, the kids are engaged, everyone's participating, having fun and learning. It's a great start. I'm having a fun time learning and working with the coaches. I got to play basketball with a whole bunch of different people I did not know. My favorite part of the whole, this whole experience is learn how to dunk. <laughs> I like how we're getting trained by these professionals at playing basketball. Oh, it makes me feel like good, like this team, we're like a team. I, I am having an awesome time here. I come from Chagin. I brought a bunch of youth with me. And they're out right now with their groups and learning some necessities for developing basketball skills and hopefully learning some youth leadership skills as well. If I didn't go to school and I didn't interact with other people in my classroom, I wouldn't be able to go on the basketball court and integrate with my teammates. They have a lot of things that, a lot of obstacles that they're going through in this community. And I think basketball can help them in so many ways. Basketball promotes leadership. It promotes teamwork, structure, uh, discipline. 
and these are the values that uh, you know my parents instilled in me, and these are the what we're trying to instill in them, something that they can take away with and uh, become better people because of it. We saw a lot of work with the kids on the court, but what was happening behind the scenes of our clinicians teaching the community mentors about how to lead kids through play and, and sport and activities. Uh, that's that snowball effect that, that will come from it. So hopefully next weekend they get back together and play basketball. Fire! As a member of the uh, Mississauga First Nation, I want to uh, welcome, welcome all of you here today, especially all you young people. This is so awesome. Such a, a fantastic event for our youth. Everybody's just talking about like the, the amazing thing they saw today. You know, one of my thing was today was the, the fish fry that that one of the community members actually caught all the fish we ate for lunch. We'd never experienced that something like that, maybe ever again. Having all those volunteers come out to cook today, that was amazing. I thought the most best thing was um, I have uh, a couple of uncles that I rarely ever see, and um, but they, I saw them today and they were frying fish. And they were happy and I was just really really grateful to see them there and I was so happy to see them there to have them be a part of the community. Tomorrow's day three We've got all the same kids coming uh, to the third day and so they're forming some really good bonds and so uh, with the soccer program I think uh, and with Danny coming it's going to be a, a fantastic day and uh, of course culminating in this great uh, meal that the chefs prepare for us and talking about nutrition and healthy uh, active living. Anybody just doing soccer? What are some of the characteristics? What are some of the things you think it's uh, a good coach should do or should be? We had a wicked session with Train the Trainers this morning. Uh, so we taught some young up and coming coaches how to coach, give them a little tips and pointers and now we get the opportunity to work with the kids which is just awesome. Slow and steady, lots of touches. They're keeping the ball nice and close to them. I was excited to come here. I, uh, I knew I was picked to come here uh, with some of the TFC members. I work for the community and you know, I, I googled uh, the whitefish and I was excited from the moment I'm being picked. And from Amsterdam, for me, this is the only time in my life that I'm able to come and make this journey up north in Canada. So it's a, it's a good experience. We have 40 some odd kids out here uh, participating with our clinicians and a few of our athletes. We're having fun, we're doing soccer drills and skills. The kids are having a great time, a lot of laughing. The biggest thing for me was just the excitement on their faces. And I was actually sitting with uh, the other community mentors and I was just amazed looking at their faces and they're smiling from ear to ear. The, like just joy, happiness. And I think a lot of times as adults, you forget how much um, important it is to play or to have fun, how, how much important sports are. One of the impacts of colonization has been that our traditional diets have really vanished from our communities. And so we have young people that pop and sugar and sweets is their number one choice of nutrition. So uh, we've been up north here uh, for a couple days now and we've really got what you call a traveling kitchen on the road. We've got trailer uh, with equipment on it. Uh, bringing uh, a little taste of what the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Raptors and the TFC um, eat pre-game. 
We come from a small town, and, and it's quite expensive to go to the grocery store. It costs us about like 100 bucks for like four, four little bags, you know? So some people can't afford that to eat healthy, so it's so much easier to go to the store and get like pop and chips and the junk food, which, you know, when you're a little kid, I'd rather have a pop and a chip than a banana. We try to bring the message of this is what the pros do, and if you try to emulate a little bit what the pros do, then maybe a little bit of that teaching will get into the youth and they'll start to appreciate the importance of healthy eating. So it's an easy message to kind of relate to the children um, and really to inspire them to eat properly. What an amazing eye-opening weekend. Um, just some of the things that we've seen and we've heard and being around the community and uh, just their, their joy of the land and their spaces and so welcoming for us. It's a Thunderbird. It's a gift that really means a lot to us. It's been amazing and the kids are, can still hear them out there screaming and laughing and having fun. I really enjoyed myself bringing my youth out to the program. They like the, the program itself. They like right to play. They like MLSE. They like the players. They enjoyed the, the treatment that they received from the, the whole staff in, in general. Some of these communities are quite small. I can guarantee everybody's looking out their window. Now everybody's seeing a whole bunch of kids doing some pretty amazing things, supported by the parents that are volunteering, supported by the, all the youth leaders that are from these communities are here. The community knows something significant has happened. When I look into the halls here and I listen to these young people and their young voices and all the different activities, whether they're painting or drawing or interfacing with one another, we're actually playing a physical sport. We're watching leaders develop and they're being inspired. They're being inspired to develop their minds, their creativity, and their freedom. And I know that we have a legacy of leaders coming that are going to just move things that I have never even imagined. I don't think I, I had any negativity all weekend. Not one comment, not one, you know, I can't do this, or, and it was... I think it was everybody just pulling together and helping one another in each community and I saw that in other communities that we were guests in and I thought it was just something really amazing. Like everything else, all the politics, everything's just pushed aside and it's just about children, youth and relationships. We're seeing breakthroughs. We're seeing amazing breakthroughs in our young people and uh, it's back to something so simple, right? Being ourselves. Thunder Bay this week working with 12 play partner communities to run a four day long coaching clinic. They're able to come in, learn from us, get certified in different basketball capacities. Um, they've taken several workshops this week um, that were part of the National Coaching Certification Program and they'll be able to take all the knowledge and the certification that they did get back to their communities um, and run programming on a longer term basis. Every participant here is going to take this program home to their communities. They're going to go home, they're going to recruit youth, they're going to advertise the program. A lot of us came in and we're like, we don't know how to dribble a ball, we don't know how to pass, we don't know how to shoot. And just coming to the clinic, we're all more aware of, like, just even ourselves and what we want to do when we go back to the community. So I think we've, we have grown and I think that all of us are going to take back awesome skills for the youth to implement. And hopefully they become instructors just like, just like myself and they, they can build on that and then they can teach others and then they can build on that. The most important thing is that we're creating sustainable programs right now and that we're training coaches and that they're the ones who are going to implement the programs and they're the ones who are going to deliver these activities with kids. My personal goal is to have a team within the community. There is not a single team within our community of approximately 800 people. Even within our elementary school, there is no team. There is no fundamental teaching, there is no nutritional component, and I would just love to bring that back to the youth so that they have something along with the sport. After this, this week, I'm hoping that there will be more role modeling in the community, like from older youth in the community that will step up and teach the younger, the younger generation.
Next year in phase two of the partnership, maybe some of the youth who are in the program this year will come out to the coaching clinic next year and they'll be the ones running the program. Um, for these programs to be sustainable, we really need to be able to stay involved in some capacity or another, um, especially just from a mentorship standpoint for them. They need people to, uh, to lean on as they're initiating new programs in their communities and we have to be there along the way to help them do that. I think it's, it's only building from what we've started uh, in our other programs and this is maybe a model that we can take to our other programs uh, that can encourage the coaches to just be long-term coaches in their communities and long-term role models and to encourage youth to keep practicing and keep playing and maybe they can be coaches someday as well. It's only the beginning of a long partnership so we're excited to be with each other again and uh, carry it forward for the next couple of years. The question would be, how do we keep that flow moving? And with our people, we have what we call wings, eh? And um, I always see a person that is in charge of something and takes lead to something. Their wings spread out and bring somebody else underneath. And the ones that they bring underneath is the ones that are going to be next following in that path. When, like, like say Candace. I guess that's the, that's the joy of it. The whole, the whole um, process of right, like it just, it just gets better and better and better to uh, be able to access the, the really positive parts of my community with this program and the positive parts of everybody, and just to make a difference with the children and youth. So I see her; uh, she's getting her wings out there and already has people underneath her wings that are observing, watching, and learning. So, and then after that, uh, it's sort of like a like the eagle, we say, and they take their wing off and down you go. Now you're next to carry that on. I've seen a lot of smiles, a lot of happy kids. This is for them, it's for them. They, they, I think they felt that and they uh, recognized that and they it showed the youth uh, feel important and wanted and part of something good. They're, they're talking about something they want to do in the future now. Oh, maybe yesterday they probably were just thinking of today. It's actually a prophecy and the elders talk about the prophecy is that there's, the time has come where we all, all peoples of the world are gonna to come together and raise our own human consciousness to take better care of each other and take better care of our families and our communities. And that's really the lasting legacy of this incredible partnership. I've seen leaders develop and, and through the ages, either the uh, Right Play program, we have kids up to 17 and 18 years old that are just moving mountains in the community. Having, forming relationship with leadership, forming relationships in their own home, and forming relationships amongst themselves, that they're gonna change their community for the better. My future's in good hands. I can say that. <laughs>